good evening. How'd your day go? I hope it was great. I, I hope you walked through the day uh, meditating on the part you play in the body of Christ, meditating on how vital that part is, meditating on the fact that God has already blessed each one of us who call upon him as Lord and Savior. Um, I hope you went through the day understanding that there are a lot of people praying for you. Um, God is knitting us together in a fashion that is just unprecedented. Uh, there's more prayer and more encouragement going out uh, than ever before. And I got to tell you, it just blesses me incredibly to see God's hand moving through our congregation. And as we begin to move into the community this week, I expect those blessings to multiply. Of course, we know that God has already blessed us. Uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to the weekend. Um, tomorrow is Good Friday. Uh, Saturday night, we have the Easter Eve service. Uh, the five pastors from the Warrenton Gospel Partnership will come together and celebrate the resurrection. And then on Sunday morning, um, we'll gather together online. Um, we've got a Sunday school that will start at 10 o'clock, and then our regular service will start at 11 o'clock. I'm working on that sermon already. Uh, the theme is going to be an empty tomb and an empty church. What now? Uh, so I'm looking forward to sharing that with you. So I'd, I'd like to end our day, though. Uh, you know, we talked this morning uh, about the book of 1 Corinthians and chapter 12 and uh, how Paul describes the vital part that each one of us plays in the body, um, that we can't all be doing the same thing, that we shouldn't be pressured into all doing the same thing, but we should occupy the part that we're designed to play, the part that we're gifted to play, um, and be thankful for that because all those parts are really important. Then as he rolls into chapter 13, he's going to tell us how the body functions as one, how it is to love each other, to love each other like Christ. So uh, get yourself something to drink. I've got uh, my Kimon Red uh, tea here. It's a, a oolong tea, uh, great aftertaste, very delicate flavor, and it's great for the end of the day. So get yourself situated, make yourself comfortable, and let's turn to 1 Corinthians 13. Uh, so, so Paul starts out uh, with the idea that you can have all these spiritual gifts and there can be a lot of things going on, but if there's no love in the church, um, then it's not worth anything. And so you can even you can even sacrifice yourself to be burned if you don't have love. You gain nothing. You, you make yourself into a martyr, but if it's not for love, there's nothing in it. And then he goes in his description of love and uh, you know, th this is typically applied to the marriage relationship, to family relationships, and it's certainly good for that. But in context, we need to understand that Paul is trying to describe to the Corinthian church how the body functions. And so there's division there. There, you know, there are, I'm of Apollos, I'm of Paul. There, there are divisions over certain sins in the church. There's divisions over how to come together and have the meals. There's all sorts of divisions. And Paul is really saying, well, that's not what love is. Let me tell you what love is. And he describes love the way Christ loves. Now, he's not overt about this, but if we look at this carefully, we'll understand that this is the type of unconditional love that Christ has for each of us, and he expects us to exhibit that to each other. So in verse 4, he says, Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It's not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It's not irritable or resentful. It doesn't rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. So, just going back to the beginning, he said, love is patient and kind. I, I, I love this, because the first sign that we're not loving is when we lose patience and compassion for each other. And we need to understand that, there, that Christ never reaches a point in his ministry, even as he's being nailed to the cross, where he says, you know what? You've pushed me enough. Uh, I, I can't take any more. I've run out of patience for you. I'm not going to do this again. So he calls us to be imminently patient with each other. And that takes intentionality. We have to bite our tongue sometimes and and keep ourselves from being impatient keep ourselves from being unkind uh so and, and so it goes from there love does not envy or boast so it we don't compare ourselves to each other 
Uh, we don't feel superior. We don't feel inferior. We re recognize that we're all important parts of the body. Uh, so we, we, we don't malign each other. Uh, we don't put each other down. We don't lift each other up in an inappropriate way. Uh, and so it's not arrogant. It's not prideful. It's not self-centered. It's not rude. It's not mean. We, we're not mean to each other. We don't gossip about each other. And look at this. It does not insist on its own way. It's not stubborn. It's not totally self-consumed. It's not irritable. It's not resentful. We don't get mad at each other. We don't lose our tempo. <coughs> we don't get contemptuous with each other. We don't. And the, the idea of being resentful is that we don't hold on to a wrong suffered. Uh, there is no, you always do that. There is no, I put up with this for a long time. There is no, well, there you go again. So uh, we forgive each other the infractions that are levied against us uh, the way Christ has forgiven us. That doesn't mean that we immediately make ourselves into doormats. So we don't just put up with ungodly behavior, but we don't hold it against people. And so we don't allow bitterness to rise up in our hearts and take hold of us. So it does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. And what this means is that there is no, well, you had that coming, didn't you? There is no, well, we all, nobody's surprised that he fell or nobody's surprised that he slipped or, you know, we could see these weaknesses in them. So it rejoices in the truth. Uh, for those of us that are members of the body of Christ, uh, even though we might slip, even though we might fall, we rejoice in the fact that we're saved, that we're, we're going to be in heaven together for all eternity. And then in verse 7, he says, Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. What a beautiful expression of the love of Christ to bear all things for our sake, to believe all things for our sake, to hope all things for our sake. It just, it's an incredible picture of the cross. And as we're molded and shaped into the image of God, this is how we're called to treat each other. In our intimate relationships, in our family relationships, and in the body of Christ relationships. God has given us this beautiful gift of unity in him. How do we express it? We have it here in these three short verses. Another thing that we can ponder on. Let this be on your mind and in your heart as you lay your head on your pillow tonight. And may God impress these things upon you. May you experience his peace. May you experience the rest uh, that he gives us just by being in his presence and experiencing his power. And may you be blessed when you wake up tomorrow morning as we roll into the holiest weekend of the year. God bless you. I miss you. I'll talk to you tomorrow.